Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creative Mornings Winnipeg. We're so happy to have you joining us. I'm Patrick O'Reilly, one of the team members here at Creative Mornings Winnipeg, and I'll be your host today. I'm currently joining you from Treaty One Territory, the traditional lands of the Ojibwe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene nations, and homeland of the Red River Métis. I acknowledge that the water I'm drinking today is sourced from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation, while at the same time, many of our Indigenous communities lack clean drinking water, even today. Please tell us in the chat where you are joining us from today. A special welcome to those of you joining us from outside of Winnipeg and even outside Canada. We'd love to know where you're from. While you're telling us that in the chat, I'd like to send a special thank you and shout out to the Red River College Polytech and their American Sign Language class for providing interpretation for our events. In our creative mornings, we are connected to the global community by our monthly theme, which this month is design. So our hashtags for today's events are hashtag CMWPG and hashtag CMDesign. Here's what's gonna happen at today's event. At every Creative Mornings Winnipeg event, we have a musical guest to celebrate the musical talent right here in Manitoba. And this month's musical guest is Warming. After hearing from Warming, you'll be invited to join a table group to participate in an activity on the theme of design. After about eight minutes at our tables, we'll invite you back here to the main stage to hear from today's speaker, Jordan Stranger. Before we go any further, please note, Creative Mornings are recorded by video and photography, and we'll be using that video and photography on our social media, our websites, and by attending this event, you're agreeing to having your image, video, and chat comments recorded. So a few instructions about this AirMeet platform we're on. In case you're using it for the first time, uh, and I should say, if you've used the platform before, please support those at your table when you're at your tables to explore it further. You may have noticed that when you entered, you landed in the area called the social lounge. This is the place where you can hang out and meet new people at virtual tables. When you're in the social lounge, feel free to take a seat at any table by clicking the take a seat button. Be sure you turn your camera and your microphone on using the controls at the bottom of the screen. You'll then be able to only see and hear the people who are seated at your table. Folks at other tables can't see or hear you. If you wanna step out of the table, click on the X button on the top right corner of the window and you'll be back in the main room with many tables to choose from. The max number of seats per table is I think eight. So feel free to table hop to meet more wonderful folks just like at an in-person event with conference tables. Move back and forth if you like. Keep an eye out, of course, for the general chat on your right-hand side. That's where we'll post any announcements or reminders. And while the presentation is on, you'll see our stage come onto the screen just like it is now, and you won't be able to see or hear your table mates. Your sound and video are automatically turned off when you're watching the main stage. So if you need to fold some laundry or hit your nose, don't worry. Until we go back to the table groups, you're off camera. So before we continue today, please also remember to join us uh, for our November virtual event on the global theme of liminal. We'll be welcoming special guest John Lusford, who's here with us today from Flipside XR. The November creative morning will be held November 26th. John is a self-taught software developer, musician, and entrepreneur who's passionate about technology as a means of social change. His first company, Simeon Systems, was an open source software company that worked with clients such as Princeton, NOAA, TiVo, and Disney. After a decade immersed in all things web, John got a taste for working in virtual reality as part of one of the first VR projects in Manitoba. There he founded Campfire Union with two of his best friends to explore the possibilities of this new technology, which of course is very much in the news this week. So fast forward a few years from when he started that and they're now called Flipside XR and they spend their time making the world's first virtual TV studio that enables anyone with a VR headset to make their own live animated shows with their friends. So John will be with us next month. The tickets are available now on the Creative Mornings Winnipeg website. So don't forget to register after today's event. 
So before we dive in, we also want to say thank you to our global and our local partners. Without them, we wouldn't get to do this fabulous work in building a community of creativity right here in Winnipeg. So thank you to the Creative Mornings global partner, MailChimp. 2021 marks the 12 year anniversary of MailChimp supporting Creative Mornings. <clears throat> so yeah, you heard that right. 12 years they've been supporting Creative Mornings. Their generous partnership has allowed CM to grow from just a handful of chapters to over 220 today. As true champions of the underdog, we are so grateful for their support, which makes all Creative Mornings events possible around the world. So thank you also to Skillshare, our global partner for online learning. Skillshare has launched an exciting new opportunity designed to support the professional development of your creative teams. You can offer your team a platform for creative learning and development that covers everything from graphic design, leadership and management. Skillshare has everything your creative team needs to become better problem solvers, inspired innovators, energized leaders. So take a look at teams.skillshare.com. Thank you to our local partners also. You can see these awesome partners on the screen right now. To our Creative Mornings Winnipeg Steering Committee, I say thank you for your hard work and for bringing in these events every month. Thanks team. We're also looking for new volunteers, of course, to support our Creative Mornings events. Everything from event day support to marketing, promotion, speaker support. The time commitment is totally up to you and you'll be part of an amazing, talented group of people who care deeply about spreading creativity. So please reach out to let us know you'd be interested. And now it's time for some of our welcome, uh, wonderful local music, thanks to our partnership with Manitoba Music. We have a special musical performance by Manitoba performer, Warming. During this first song, which is called did it again. We invite you to get up and move your body to release something you're holding on to. You can dance, you can jump, you can sway, you can shake, whatever serves to design your perfect morning.
Thank you, Warming. Wow, that was fantastic. We'll get to hear from him again before we end today. So as I mentioned, October's theme is design. We live in a world of design and intention behind every encounter, every technology we touch, every structure we step through. Design is an alchemy, a marriage of material and meaning. It's an investigation, inspiration, and form and function. To design is to create out of nothing, something. So design is to play, an invitation to stay open and curious, and reimagining new ways to design is to think, a method of learning through making, scrapping failed experiments for fresh insight and starting again. The Creative Mornings Trois Rivières chapter chose this month's exploration of design. Olivier Charlan illustrated the theme, and Skillshare is presenting the theme. So, before we hear from our amazing speaker, we're going to invite you to join a table group for a short discussion. If you'd like to join the table using ASL interpretive support, please join table one. So this will be an eight minute activity. While you're in your table groups, we invite you to share examples of where you would love to change the design of something to make life easier or Share an example of what you consider to be fantastic design. So an example of something you might redesign. Corporate forms you have to fill out, right? Who among us has not had to deal with the Canada customs form that has all those little boxes to put your name in and microprinting of the instructions? What if your name has more letters than there are boxes? Or what about paper straws? They're, of course, designed to ensure that they're environmentally friendlier than their plastic cousins. But sink them in a Slurpee or a drink for a few minutes, and many of them are rendered pretty useless for the task that they were designed for. So what would you redesign? Or what designs have you come across that you think are amazing? We're going to share thoughts on that at our tables in the social lounge over the next eight minutes. Enjoy. Now, if you're not sure, hey, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a great time with your groups at the tables. It would be wonderful if you could share in the chat what are some of the products or services that your group talked about as badly designed or having a great design. I'm now very pleased to introduce Suzanne Braun, one of our Creative Mornings Winnipeg team members. Suzanne is an experienced entrepreneur and the founder and managing partner of Relish. Since 1998, Suzanne has led the transition of Relish from a design boutique with one employee to an integrated agency of over 18. In addition to extensive experience in design and technology, Suzanne has a Blue Belt certification in innovation engineering, as well as a certificate in user experience design. Suzanne will be sharing our Creative Mornings manifesto and she'll be introducing our speaker today. So over to you, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. Creative Morning chapters around the world celebrate creative talent, but also promote an open space to connect with like-minded people. 
Creative Mornings is guided by a powerful manifesto, which we read at every event. Here's the manifesto. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. A creative life, oh, we are here to support you, celebrate with you and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in jazz hands, in virtual claps and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in our neighbors and in our cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. The Winnipeg chapter has also made a commitment to reflecting diversity and ensuring inclusion at all of our events. Located in one of the most diverse communities in North America, we are as inclusive as we are creative and we will be creative in order to achieve inclusion. We believe in the value of diversity of perspectives, audiences, and industries as we create safe events to debate and discuss what it means to be creative. We will celebrate multiple approaches and points of view, and we will be mindful and purposeful in building a culture where these differences are not only valued, but celebrated. I am now very pleased to welcome Jordan Stranger, Black Bear Man, Makad Makwa Inini to the Creative Mornings Winnipeg virtual stage. While Jordan is speaking, please feel free to add your questions in the Q&A tab beside the chat on the top right of your screen. Patrick will monitor the questions and we will move into Q&A immediately following Jordan's presentation. Jordan's work are deeply rooted in the traditions within contemporary Indigenous culture. As an Oja Cree individual, originally from Pegwa's First Nation, Jordan uses his life experiences to drive his artistic passions. He obtained his diploma in graphic design at Red River College in 2012, and until recently had worked in advertising for most of a decade, selling and pitching campaigns to thousands of clients. Today, he continues to work as a full-time self-employed visual artist and graphic designer, operating with his own brand, Totem Dudum. Totem Dudum was created in 2018 with the intention of spreading the positivity and color of the past um, and current Canadian Indigenous culture. It started when he would leave acrylic paintings on paper around Winnipeg area and wheat paste onto walls. Over the last years, he has held several art exhibits in Manitoba and has participated in culture events in Toronto and Oaxaca. Recently, clients, recent clients have, has, he has worked with are Apple, Shopify, Manitowabi, Mucklex, or Manitoba Mucklex, and Holt Renfew. And now Creative Mornings Winnipeg is thrilled to welcome Jordan Stranger, um, AKA Totem Dudum, to our virtual stage today. Welcome Jordan. The stage is yours. Difficult beginning here. Um, so let's uh, start the presentation. Uh, thank you all for being here. This is very awesome. And I'm looking forward to sharing a bit of my process and exactly what it is that I do as a creative person in, in my studio and in my home. So, here we go. Uh, hello, Fanse Buzu. Uh, my name is Jordan Stranger. Um, this is where I grew up. This is where I still go whenever I can to clear my head, to find my balance. Uh, being out home centers me and it brings me back to those elements which I try to include in all of my design work and all of my artwork. Uh, obviously, ceremony life, um, traditional Ojibwe and Cree practices are a big part of what I do. This is my sweat lodge on the right side and you know just a shot of what I get to look at every morning or every day that I go home and this is land in which our people have, my people have worked very hard to cultivate and take care of and it's you know put on to me and my brothers, my sisters, my generations to take care of. So looking back at all this land and wondering what 
I could do with that inspiration was what led me to college, which what was what led me to constantly working on art. But it, within all of that, I had a lot of inspirations. I had a lot of exposure to art. This is one of my uncles, uh, Stuart Stranger, and he did so many paintings, like every restaurant or place you would go to, it, you would see one of his works and it was so detailed and very refined. And, you know, I was always exposed to that and I would always bump into him. And my other uncle, Leslie Sinclair, who did very photorealistic paintings just on black canvas with a white, white paint and a brush. And he started painting on cardboard because, you know, back then he couldn't really afford anything. And him and my father were very, very close. And they would do uh, art shows together and tours, do tours together. And I would follow them. And this is an example of my father's work now. He started soapstone carving and went to University of Manitoba, got his master's in fine arts, and now he's a bronze artist. And these are just two examples of what he's done. Having all of these experiences with my family and a constant reinforcement of art, you know, put me in that right direction. I just didn't know where I wanted to go at this point in time. And then I decided for to go to college. A lot of people might recognize this if they went to Red River and they see it in the atrium. And this was purchased by the college at the time. And I was, this was very new to me. I wasn't very um, keen on knowing what, what direction should I take with illustration. And I had some really great instructors, Randy Butterfield and Ken Stabnick. Uh, they pushed me out of my comfort zone. And this is sort of what sprung uh, this illustration style, which I went with and I think I drew for about five years straight. Uh, my arm, my hands was very tired because um, this is all done on black paper with uh, pencil crayon. And it was very detailed work and I really wanted to capture the regalia and the design of clothing, uh, get the beadwork and all the patterns um, in to what I do, just to share it with people. So this image is, you know, her hair is sweet grass and she's holding cedar. And since it's a jingle dress dancer, I mean, you know, loving powwow and regalia, this is uh, representing all the medicines uh, on her dress, which is, you know, all about healing. And having done some, you know, more than a few pieces, I had a, a few art shows and this was one of them. And this touched on the residential school legacy. This touched on the Indian Act. Um, very big problematic policy, which is still active today, which should honestly be burned. Um, and, and to show those mock graves of children at residential schools. And the, the challenge was to get people to walk over the graves and to get to the artwork. And a lot of people said, no, I don't want to do that. And I told them, well, that's what reconciliation is. You know, we have to see what's in front of us. We have to acknowledge that tragedy. And I told them, you know, these graves aren't real. These are, these are just piles of dirt in a gallery. But they still felt that way. So that was my idea was to challenge people and to show them the realities which we live with every day. And it's not just Indigenous people. It's everybody in Canada. So we're all affected by that. So after taking that artwork in that direction, I wanted to change it up a bit. I had had fun with pencils. I had fun with paper and my arm was really tired. So I wanted to put my design skills to work and think of and rethink of how can I put you know, my work out into the world. And that's what sprung totem to a uh, Totem is just a, a word that you use for a, a marker, something you leave for navigation. And, and dodem is clan in Ojibwe. And I'm from the bear clan. So, I wanted that language aspect in the name and to have that four direction uh, circle there, just which represents me. And I wanted to leave bits and pieces of my, my culture and my clan around. And from the Bear Clan, our role is to, you know, protect and have medicine and heal people and also educate them. So that's what I wanted to do with my work. And it started simply with just post-it notes. Um, in college, they got us to create thousands of little thumbnails of something and it drove us all mad, but it was worth it because it taught us that value of repetition and fine tuning and figuring out that design and what's the best option. And, you know, there really never is the best option. There's just the one that you like the most. 
That's the way I view it. So I would do these for hours. I would keep creating post-it note after post-it note. This just the goal was to create simplified messaging, and it was like logo design and many other aspects of that. And I wanted to share stories in which I learned and many things in which I had the privilege of knowing and and you know being able to share that. And I would sit in my time, my downtime, and do these things. And eventually decided, you know, I, I, I needed to get them out there. So I started doing that. I was in my basement. I started painting on just scrap paper. And I kept going one after another, repetition. And I self-taught myself how to paint. Nobody really showed me how. I knew the process, but I just went with it. And I was always inspired by street art and Shepherd Ferry and all these other people that were just putting their work out to the world without permission, you know, and it's just paper. So I figured I'm not hurting anybody and it's not propaganda. So I would go out onto the street, put these things out there for the world to see. And it turned out it was very well received. I was getting a lot of positive messages from a lot of people and I did not expect the response that I had got. I was just sharing messages, things about myself or the top right, you see an elk crossing a river and the bottom, you see two people communicating on the right and on the left is about mental health and the beauty that's on the inside and some of the things that are sharp objects that want to hurt us on the outside. But keeping it simple, less is more. And having worked in advertising for a while, um, that was the goal was to make sure things were simplified enough that you could remember it you know, when you drove by it, you know, six seconds or less. And I was applying these principles to the work I was creating so that people could see something bright and colorful in a very gray area and appreciate it. And then that sparked a whole bunch of interest. People wanted to work with me. I didn't go asking, which was very flattering and surprising as I had just started. And this was one of the biggest murals I've ever done. Uh, well, second biggest at the time it was, and it was very frightening to be on a lift and to be out there and it was freezing in September and it was a learning process and I was challenging myself and, you know, that was a challenge for me and times have evolved a bit since then. And that means, you know, more opportunity, more murals, thinking of the design on that wall and how can I utilize that space and, and, and there's all of these other learning curves and things that go into um, not just painting, but planning a mural, planning a project. You know, these are still at the South Isle right now at the Forks, which was done for Manitoba 150. All of these designs were just things that I had started on a post-it note, which evolved into a more refined piece of work. And that's just how art evolves. Same with design. A lot of people say, you know, you are a painter, but a lot of your work has design elements. It's just, you know, you can't mistake it. And a lot of those elements I learned from college, which I'm very grateful for. And then this all led to my own solo art show with that style of work, which I really felt was valid. It needed to be put out in the world in that way, in a very sacred way. And I, you know, had an amazing time. And this was in 2019. You know, and this whole show was very healing process it was for everybody else to heal it was for everybody else to absorb the culture and see what it was and for what it was and you know I had people come up to me crying uh, because it touched them and I was just grateful to have had that experience and you know I will be having more but this is you know was the start of something that I did not expect um, when you try to do things on your own when you're you're pursuing your craft and you're very uncertain of the future and i was really nervous but you know the work spoke for itself and people showed a huge interest in what i do and at this point things started to get very very busy and in terms of design and i went off and, and partnered with festival de voyageur and they contacted me and said you know we love your work and we want to work with you. And they wanted to revamp and rebrand their festival because they felt that there wasn't a lot of people that were um, non-Francophone speaking showing up. They were showing me stats and the stats were, you know, very interesting. 
They wanted more indigenous people to show up. They wanted to honor that history of the culture and the Métis people. So I created this and it was all mainly just hand drawn and then turned into a vector design. And that led to creating a campaign for them uh, with the, the outdoor ads and so on. And we had other artists, me included, painting these backdrops for the stages. And, you know, that was a huge honor to be a part of that and to have been given free reign uh, on the design and said, you know, we trust your judgment. That's extremely flattering, you know, to have that be given to you. And I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. And we're still working together today. And then, you know, other logo designs, things that I'm passionate about, the culture. And I get a lot of indigenous organizations contact me asking, what can we do together? They give me their vision and I create the visual for them. They tell me and they direct me and we work together just uh, back and forth with the client as usual. And I'm allowed to put my own spin and twist on these things. And they are very welcoming in that process. And a lot of these were done for different organizations and reasons. And there's a lot of symbolism behind these. For instance, the red pipe is a female pipe in the center of this logo in the moon. And the bottom right is you know a male pipe. And then there's that balance. There's the sun and the moon, the dark side and the bright side. And those points for the stars and those flower petals for growth and always have very simplified meanings once it's explained it becomes more clear and in turn you know we've accomplished our goal which is to create that message and this was a lot of fun to do and then more recently i had worked with apple um, for national indigenous indigenous heritage month and that was a big deal for me because they handpicked me out of many, many wonderful Indigenous artists in Canada to represent Indigenous people. And that was um, a shocker to me. And we had initially met and I had worked with a creative director in London, England, and I had been coordinating with other people from Thailand and Tokyo and other places. And it was amazing and astounding to just be a part of that process once again to learn about interface and understand where these, this text is going and what exactly will these be highlighting. And all of these illustrations I did for them, you know, represented different uh, applications. So different apps for different things, language, culture, reconciliation, and many other subjects. And these were just the header piece. And I realized um, this went worldwide. Anybody who had an app, iPhone was able to see my work and at that, that point, I realized, you know, this is a very big deal. And my parents were extremely proud. You know, they were crying. Uh, they, they were just astounded. And so was I, you know, and my, my, my good friend, who is my assistant, um, we were both just freaking out because it had found these people and it had reached across the world and they wanted to work with me. Um, but, you know, uh, the story goes on. It's it, these, these pieces were worked on for hours and hours, constantly tweaked. I had very good direction from the director, and you know, these they're awesome people. And these initiatives for highlighting Indigenous culture today are extremely important. And I usually jump on the opportunity to take part in them because we can do it now. Times have changed, and that's what I'm all about. Is that looking forward and also reflecting on the past and how can we do better. And I think that is my personal obligation, moral obligation, especially as an indigenous person to take on these challenges and to show other people and other indigenous people that you can reach levels of success. You can get out of places of darkness. You can honor your family and your ancestry with the work that you do, but you have to work very hard. And I think believe that that's what I've done up to this point. After the App Store stuff, we had worked with, I worked with Apple Music and they needed a playlist cover for all of the indigenous uh, artists, which they wanted to highlight in that month. And, you know, we chose a certain style, we went with it and they created that for them. And then later on, they implemented that design into their interface and animated it and i thought that was really great i didn't expect 
that much. And this all happened within a span of two months. So it was constant back and forth. It was a lot of work, even though it's digital and it seems simple. There's a lot of critiquing. There's a lot of process behind everything. And there's a whole bunch of sketches that I just didn't show you today. So with that, um, I believe that's my bit. Um, thank you all for listening. I could go on and on, but I think this is as much as I can do today. So miigwech. Jordan, thank you so much. This was amazing. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. The, uh, not only to see your amazing art and how it's affecting people around the world, but to hear your own story of um, starting literally in the footsteps of your father and your uncles as you traveled with them uh, in the art they were making. And then to see you bring that to life through the, the various phases, the post-it note phase, we could call it. And um, it was also great to hear how what you learned at Red River College Polytech was built into some of what you were doing with your art when you mentioned the idea of um, the paintings you were doing as street art and that the message had to be seen in six seconds as people were traveling by that that idea of um, understanding the principles of advertising and bringing it in to such an important concept with the messages in your art. Thank you for that. Thank Would you, you mind taking a few questions from the room? Sure. Uh, we've got a couple here. So first of all, uh, what advice would you give or would you offer to new designers who are just starting out and, and may not have that confidence yet? <laughs> oh, man, that is a good question. Um, trust the process, um, whatever that is. You know, I think that's important to understand where it is you want to be. And whatever process that got you to where you are, keep working with it, keep trusting it. And, you know, be open to criticism. And in in, in, it depends on what it is, but be open to those options because those are going to help you down the road, good or bad. And that's up for you to interpret. Um, know that if it's something you love, it's obviously going to carry you. But if it isn't, then reconsider that option. And that's what I've learned up to this point. I was working, you know, in advertising. I, I got to see aspects of the design world and eventually just realized, you know, I, I, I have enough experience now. I want to do this on my own. And I took that leap, and that was only because of that confidence of trusting that I had worked up to that point to be confident in myself. See, it wasn't just a simple process. It just took time. So give it time. <laughs> Wonderful message. Give it time. And, and I'm hearing you say that, that that confidence grows from being yourself, from being comfortable with who you are and, and wanting yes. to share that. So fantastic. Thanks, Jordan. Um, and then of all the art that you create, uh, what medium do you find you love the most? You, you know, the drawing, the painting, now you're into so much digital work. Um, do you have a favorite? Uh, I, I, oh man, they're all great. But, uh, you know, I, I love painting. I think it was just something eventually I would end up doing. Um, it, it just, you know, it gets messy and it's colorful. Um, mistakes are fun because you can fix them. And uh, there's so much paint in the world and a lot of paper. <laughs> um, and it's just way more interactive. It's, it's way more holistic. It's an exercise. You know, there's many par parts to a process of making a painting. There's the research, there's the drawing, there's all of this. And then there's prepping the canvas. And, I think that's that whole mental exercise that you go through to get the painting finished. And it's a very personal process. And with digital, it's just straight onto a, a tablet. Um, I think painting really forces you to reflect. And that's why I love doing it. Fantastic. And, and as you said, a self-taught painter. So messy, colorful, and mistakes are fun. <laughs> was a phrase you just said, and I love that. Those are words to live by. Messy, colorful, and mistakes are fun. Jordan, thank you so much. Um, we're going to uh, close the Q&A right now, and um, I just want to thank you again, and thanks to everyone for taking the time to join us today at Creative Mornings. 
We look forward to seeing you at Creative Mornings on November 26, where we'll be welcoming John Luxford from Flipside XR on the theme of liminal. And tickets are available now on the website. So uh, if you have anything to share or have any questions, there will be an email address in the chat box. But before we close the event, I want to uh, have us all have the opportunity to enjoy another song. We invite you to consider while we're listening to this, how you can design your own path to creativity. And remember, this creative community is right here, right behind you. So we're now pleased to have another song by Warming. Like earlier, we invite you to dance, to sway, to move to the song called Hey Champ. And as Warming plays us out, I invite you to stick around for chat afterwards. Fantastic. What a great presentation from Warming. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if you'd like to stay around and chat in the chat, please do. Otherwise, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful weekend. And we hope we see you back here on November 26th. Have a great day. <laughs>